Hello, hello, good morning everyone. How's everybody doing today? I'm extremely happy because today I have the honor to have here in my house somebody that I deeply, deeply admire. Uh, I'm gonna be presenting him in, in about a minute, two minutes. Uh, but before this, I, I wanna say thank you all for spending this time with me on this show, Life at Home, a show that we are doing every Thursday at 11 in the morning. Uh, also, I need to say thank you to the sponsors, the person that are helping us to make this program a reality, and I, I'm talking about Bliss Creative. Uh, this is an amazing company that they do photographs, they do banners, they do uh, art uh, covers, and also Pianodemia, La Academia Virtual de Piano. I have my Pianodemia teacher. Right here. <laughs> That's there you go. It's good. It's good. <laughs> so, uh, also, thanks to the one and only Mario Viquez for an amazing and unbelievable sound. I keep trying to get him on camera in every single show, <laughs> and nobody nobody knows him yet. But Mario, va a sacar la mano hoy? Tampoco hoy. Bueno, <laughs> next time. Uh, so today is a very very special day for me because uh, I have here in the house someone that I I is one of my heroes, and I remember when I was. Uh, I think about 15, 16 years old. I, I I got to meet him one time. I was in Miami Day College at the time. And he came to Miami. He used to live in New York at the time. So he came to Miami to play with the amazing, the unbelievable Roy Haynes, a great drummer. For those of you who don't know who Roy Haynes is. And I remember that I get a call from, from my from my teacher at the school and he tells me, oh, a Roy Hens piano player is gonna come uh, and play for you guys uh, to the classroom, so you should come. So when I got there, the first thing is that I found out that he was Cuban, so I felt right away, I, I felt the connection right there. Uh, but the one thing that really impressed me was when I heard him play, first of all, it was like 8.30 in the morning. So for those of you who are musicians, you know that 8.30 is not a good time to be playing piano. <laughs> and I remember he was dressed in white, a white shirt. I, I'll never forget this, man. Oh, man. He had a yeah. white shirt and a jeans, and he sat there, and he, he began playing Solar. But that version of Solar uh, changed my life forever. And I, I, from that point on, I, I began searching everything that this amazing musician was doing. And later on, a few years later, I found out that he was uh, he he was teaching at a Frost School of Music at the University of Miami. So I said, man, I really, really, really need to go to Frost School because I really would like to take uh, lessons with with this guy. And I, I I applied, and I'm so thankful that I got accepted. Thanks to him, I got accepted to this school, and I was able to spend. Uh, two years learning from him, and I gotta say, my my playing changed from the first class to the last class. Um, we became friends ever since, and it's something. So uh, it's a person I really, really, really admire a lot. I have been blessed to do a few uh, duo du duo piano performances with him, and we have one coming up, right? Yeah. In May, in May, I think. 11? May 11, 18, 11, something. Oh, yeah. 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 So. So stay tuned because this is gonna be also a good performance. And I mean, I, I guess by now you know how much appreciation I have for this amazing musician. And he was just nominated for a Latin Grammy, so we're gonna be talking about this as well. So please give it up for on your house. Give it up for Martin Bejerano, the great and only. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Martin. Thank you. So thank you for having me. I said on the on the on the last uh, show last last Thursday, I said uh, there's there's like four or five pianists that I really really want to bring to <laughs> to the show, and you are one of them. Oh man! <laughs> so I'm not gonna say the other the other <laughs> the other <laughs> four. I mean, I told I told you some names yeah, before. Yeah, but yeah. I, I'm gonna keep it a secret just to. I won't tell anybody. So <laughs> so make sure that it happens. <laughs> And so nobody gets offended. <laughs> that's yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But uh, yeah, for me it's such an honor to have you here playing uh, this this piano and to be here in my house. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. So I can't wait. So 
You're all going to have a great time today. Well, thanks for having me. This is a great series you're starting. Uh, I'm excited that you're doing something like this. This, this is wonderful. Um, and uh, I'm really I'm, uh, uh, proud to be a part of it, man. Thank you. You're, you're one of my heroes now, man. Uh, as you all know who've seen Ken Well, he's a, an incredible pianist. And he's one of my favorite pianists in the world, really, uh, especially one of my favorite of the younger pianists. So um, it's great to hang, too. We don't get to hang too much. So this is, this is great to just hang out and talk a little bit. So thanks for, thanks for having me. Coffee. And drink some coffee, yeah. And I had a couple croquetas already. <laughs> I'm feeling good. So, so what, do you wanna, what do you wanna play? Oh, uh, wow, let's see. Um, well, we were just talking about Chick Corea a little bit, so maybe I'll play a, a, a Chick Corea song. This is one of my favorite songs. You mentioned Roy Haynes. This is a song I used to play with uh, Roy Haynes for many years. Uh, and this is a really a great composition by Chick called Bud Powell. There you go.
that's great. <laughs> wow, I love it. I love it. I love Thank it. you, man. Thank you. What a great tune. It is. I remember the first time I heard that tune it was about by by Chick uh, Royton. What's the name of that album that has? Uh, uh, remembering but remembering pal. pal. Yeah. Yeah. So that right. Yeah. Haynes, right? That's Roy Haynes and I think uh, Kenny Garrett, and Nick Payton, maybe or Roy Hargrove or right some. I don't remember the trumpet yeah. player. Who's yeah. Great album. Yeah. Yeah. I burned great. that album. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's great. great I like I like it very much how you're playing the piano solo. This is the first time that I hear somebody playing that piece on piano solo. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's, super cool. it's something I didn't do a lot when I was younger. Like, uh, I thought I was always a pretty bad solo piano player. And then I started just taking, like, every song that I played and making myself play it solo like make making myself like okay I, i'm gonna make this so that if i wanted to i could play it in a solo concert not all the songs worked out that way but at least i you know i kind of tried to make it happen nice. so no but i like the whole thing the yeah it sounds like a big band <laughs> <laughs> thanks man i like that wow so you see i just learned something today <laughs> so let's say hi oh we have adrian from argentina saludos adrian hey salud Martin habla español también. Eh, un poco, aquí no habla uh, eh, ni español. He has a great tune that's called uh, Cubano Arrepentido. Is, Cubano Arrepentido. <laughs> eh, we have also Virgilio from Spain, desde de, de España. De, tenemos España. gente de España. Tenemos awesome. Ornan de South California. Ooh, Southern California. Beautiful. Saludos a todos. Y bueno, a todos los que se están conectando, everybody that is, is connecting, let us know where you, you are watching that's a social bad word to say <laughs> what watching us de donde nos están viendo <laughs> <laughs> there you go so so yeah so martin tell us a little bit about the latin grammy man the the nomination yeah it was uh crazy it was something i didn't really expect to happen so it was really nice uh for, for that to happen and uh so i went out with my wife to vegas and you know did the whole thing and the red carpet and all that, and we had we had a, a blast. It was just a lot of fun. I actually saw a lot of friends that I hadn't seen that were playing in the band and I got, stuff like I, that. I got to show the picture. You, man, you took a oh, yeah. beautiful picture with your wife. Oh, man, she yeah, she really was a knockout, man. She, <laughs> she had that dress a week after uh, I got nominated. Really? <laughs> she went, yeah, she went and bought it. I'm going to look for the picture. Uh, so which album is a, that's a new album? Yeah, so that's the, the most recent album that came out in May called Hashtag Cuban American. Um, yeah, which is what I am. So that's why got, my Spanish got, isn't so good. I got good. some uh, a person that he wrote to me and he, he told me, who names an album hashtag Cuban American? I'm like, well, that's a good title. <laughs> so, well, hashtag is very title. important uh, nowadays. <laughs> Let me tell you, it was funny. It was really hard to even submit that record to different places because of the hashtag. Like a lot of the computers didn't want to accept it as a title. What so it was a really pain. I had to email like, you know, when you go to, to, to TuneCore or something to get it on, on all the streaming platforms, they have all these rules about titles and stuff. So really? it was a big pain in the butt. Yeah. I told I told this yeah. person, you know what? I wish I, I would have come up with the name. <laughs> with this name is such a great name. <laughs> so I had the picture here. I don't know. Mario, se ve, se ve ahí? Look at this. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. It's not really. But you know what? Even better. Go to Martin Herrano on, on Instagram. There you go. Click the follow button. Yes. Follow him, and then the picture is right there. You can see it. <laughs> the first time I wore a tuxedo since my wedding. No way. <laughs> yeah. What about Roy Hens? You, you guys, you guys used to dress uh, really we, nice. We didn't do suits though. No? Yeah, I mean, I've worn a suit, but not a tuxedo, like the full uh, tux. But uh, we didn't do suits too much. But we did dress nice. Yeah, we did nice. nice. And is he, is, is he still active playing? You know, we're not, we haven't gigged uh, since the pa before the pandemic. We were supposed to play his 95th birthday in March of 2020 wow. at the Blue Note for a week. And unfortunately, of course, it got canceled. But he is uh, my, my good friends and good buddies, uh, Jaleel Shaw, amazing alto sax player, and David Wong, an incredible bass player, guys in New York that had played with me and Roy for many years. They'd been going to his house wow, like so every, you know, a couple of times, every four or five months or something, and, and going and jamming there. And they said that he's, he sounds just as good as ever. Like, it's amazing. He's, and he's 97. 97 now? 97, yeah. I remember uh, one thing that I always love about Roy is, is the, the touch that he has. Yes, the, the it's drums. incredible. Yeah. It's such an incredible touch, and, and also for pianists, I guess, is 
<laughs> he's a great. He's a yeah, and just that like his symbols and stuff, and the way that yeah, it's it's perfect for piano playing. It's like it's incredible. Yeah, wow. for sure. Great, yeah, great, great. So I want to yeah. hear some more. All right, what do I play next? Let's what see. What do you want to play? I don't know. Um, maybe I'll get this one out of the way. <laughs> uh, so this is a, this is a piece. So. <clears throat> Uh, I've been getting more into my Cuban uh, background. I'm Cuban American, like hashtag says. How, how uh, you born here, right? I was born in Miami. Yeah, my mom so, so was you're American. A, you're American. Man. I'm American. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, but so I, but I wanted to get more into my Cuban roots, music wise. I never really studied Cuban music. I mean, I grew up listening to it, of course, and and I I think I have a natural feel for it. Uh, it's in there. Um, but I really wanted to get more serious about it, which is kind of what I did a little bit on this album. And this uh, piece is a, is a, is by a uh, is actually on not on my last album, but it's on uh, a, a really uh, album that I'm really proud of. That's uh, Ignacio Barroa trio, Barroa uh, trio album that came out a few years ago, and it's an arrangement I did of a classical Cuban song called uh, Los Tres Golpes mm. by Ignacio Cervantes who I had not even heard of uh, before Ignacio. I had played Lecuona and I'd heard of those guys, but I'd never heard of uh, Cervantes before. So um, this is a kind of a crazy little arrangement I did of this uh, wonderful piece, Lo Tres Gope. A really good arrangement. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow, I love it. You, you have never recorded this on piano solo? No, this is another one that I was like, I'm gonna try to play this solo, but it kicks my butt every time. But, no way. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you need to you, you need to see the, the, the video later. Oh, yeah. It sounds amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta show this. So, so Martin has a few albums, and this is a, this is Potential Energy. This is, a, this is from a few years ago, right? It's an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> this is a really good. Yeah, this that's from Osmic, like 2008 or something. That's when maybe. I met yeah. you, because yeah. I remember you gave yeah. me a copy of this, and I, right. I, I have it on my... Right in the studio, right oh, next to oh, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so please check it out. He wasn't it. The, the new one is American. Uh, Cuban, hashtag Cuban, Cuban American. Hashtag Cuban American. Yeah. So uh, save it on, on Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, go. It's, it's on your website. Yeah, todo, yes. yeah. Todo lugar, yeah. Yeah. Amazon, Amazon, everywhere. Yeah, the corner market, <laughs> at, at public shopping <laughs> center. <laughs> in la pizzeria. <laughs> in la pizzeria. <laughs> in, uh, you know. In the bakery or La Panadina. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, please su support his music because he's man, he's Martin's such a wonderful musician, and this is a way to support the musician really. That's right. Yeah. Listening to, uh, I, I get people all the time asking, how can we help you? Is it like, just go to Spotify and listen to my music? <laughs> that's that's how we get help from everybody. So uh, yeah, so you have the trio also, right? Yes, yeah, the same trio really on all my records except for the last, the one before this one was a different band, but yeah. So yeah. is uh, Ludwig? Yeah, two amazing musicians, Ludwig Alfonso, a great Cuban drummer, um, and Edward Perez, a, uh, a, a, an amazing bass player who he's, he's still living in New York. Ludwig is now down here with us in Miami. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing with those guys for, whew, since like 15 years. Really? Yeah, we've done at least four albums or something, yeah. Nice. And we play a lot with other different artists too and you know stuff so yeah they're great they're great musicians and it's nice to play with the same core group well you know you you have your guys Hilario and yeah. those guys that you guys sound so incre <laughs> incredible yeah. together because you play so much yeah tribu, tribu. yeah yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> so Martin I, uh, I I would like to learn uh, a little bit more about you like was uh, what was your beginning in music like do you study classical music or you you know what's sure yeah so um I wanted to play drums. I never wanted to play piano. Me too. You too. Yeah, I think I'll, it's like every piano every player. Piano you know, player. it's a drum. Like we hit it. Like you saw me. I'm hitting it. You know. Uh, so, um, but my mom, of course, you know, my mother made me take piano lessons. She said, if you take piano lessons for one year and you, you know, you take it seriously, um, you know, I'll let you get. Uh, I'll, you can switch to drums after a year. But, but actually, that was when I was a little older. I was already almost 10 years old then. Back when I was seven, my mom actually taught me some basic piano, like some simple things, how to read and stuff like that. And I had a good ear, so like I would, and she played a little bit of piano, so she would like uh, play, like she would practice and I would go up and like, uh, you know. Really? Yeah, I pick out little things. And wow. I remember she played this something that was like. It was this, actually. Look. So, I mean, I, got, I was like seven or eight. I, I thought that was amazing. So I went up and I kind of like taught myself kind of how to play. It sounds amazing, man. <laughs> it's kind of killing, right? Uh, so, like, I, th I think she saw that I kind of had a little natural, you know, ear for the piano. So I, I did the, but then I stopped. I started playing baseball, you know, and I said I wanted to be a second baseman like every other, you know, Cuban kid. Uh, and um, back then when I turned, like, when I was almost 10, that's when I wanted to play drums and so I started, uh, I took piano lessons for a year, and after the year, I said, you know what, I, instead of a drum set, can you give me a keyboard? Mm -hmm. Like one of those Casio, and those old school, like little Casio keyboards, and, and that was it. I, I, that's, I stuck with the piano. So. Wow. Yeah. But you, you are huge, like, uh, you, you like to listen to a lot of rock. Oh, yeah, music. yeah. I like all kinds of music. Because I but, remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My birthday party. Your you were birthday there. Yeah. party. Yeah. <laughs> well, what was that? Like, if, like ten years ago, right? Yeah, ten years ago. So eight, one, eight years ago. One day, one day. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say this? You could say it. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that. I played, <laughs> I played some good bass on that concert, actually. You did. Uh, yeah, I practiced for like, <laughs> for like three months. I, sh I was shedding my bass chops. So, so, I was at school at the time. <laughs> 
one day Martin tells me, hey, man, I'm, I'm doing my uh, birthday party, so I would like you to come. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. So I go, I go with my wife, and when I get there, <laughs> I'm like, what is Martin, you know, to say happy birthday? And then I see Martin with uh, sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I see him on the stage, actually, <laughs> with sunglasses, playing bass, going like, wow! Yeah. <laughs> he had a rock show. Yeah, he was, doing, he was actually doing a rock show, but it was unbelievable. He was playing bass, <laughs> not piano. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, I have an older brother, and... Uh, I, I grew, you know, I grew up listening to all the music that he listened to, and I think I love music so much because of him, because he loves my brother loves music like crazy. Really? He has gone to thousands of concerts. Wow. He has more records than I do. Like he's a crazy about music, but he doesn't really play. Um, so you know, I, I got into like rock and heavy metal and all sorts of stuff when I was young, and you know that's why I wanted to play drums, of course. Uh, you know, uh, so. Yeah, so it's still a big part of my my my, and even on the record, you know, like you hear, you'll hear that stuff yeah. because it's still a big part of the way that I think about and feel and hear music. You can't you can't lose that stuff. You try to lose it, you try, you know, oh, I'm gonna I gotta play like you know whatever Bud Powell or something, and but you can't lose those influences. It's in there, yeah. <laughs> like you, you can't, you could try, but it's not gonna work. No, but that's something that really comes up in your compositions because mm. of the odd meters and things yeah. like that. I think it's killing me, you know. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. It's like really modern, you know. Like, uh, yeah, you guys need to listen to his music. His music is unbelievable. I, I like the Cubano Arrepentido. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> tune, man. I gotta say, I practiced that tune for a long time. Really? <laughs> I, I couldn't figure out where the one was at the time. Yeah, that's a weird. It's a weird tune. Yeah, it's, and it's in four, right? No, that one's not I, in four. That I one is. That's, uh, been a long time, I that's like. mixed meter, like six and seven mostly. Ah, yeah, yeah, that one's kind of weird. But which one is that? Para, 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 don't pick up. That's in four. That, yeah. Which one is that? Blues one? Evolution. There you go, yeah. man. That's <laughs> that's uh, that's unbelievable. So, what what do you want to play? Um, I don't know. I'll play something. Um, I'll play something off the new album. This is another one that I said I'm gonna try to play this piano solo a little bit. Uh, this is a song that I wrote uh, during the pandemic uh, called Lonely Planet, um, and uh, I was kind of thinking about. That was when all, all that political stuff was going on and then just the whole country was kind of like crazy. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking like, man, we're like, you know, we're, we're, we, we think we're lonely because of the pandemic, but really like we've been like this the whole time, like everyone kind of in their own worlds and stuff yeah. like that. So it's a little bit of a depressing song, but I'm gonna play it anyway. <laughs> it's called Lonely Planet. <laughs> Don't cry you're in your home, right. okay?
Wow. That, that was one measure in seven or one in nine, right? At the um, end. It's like four, it three. It's like four, four, and then five, and then it switches to something else. Yeah. yeah. I forget it. <laughs> I think it was like seven and nine. Yeah, and then yeah. Something like that. That's yeah. Wow, man. How do you come up with these ideas? <laughs> rock, rock, rock and roll. Man. Rock music. <laughs> I like also the beginning of the uh, the left hand. Oh, really. thank you. Yeah. Wow, it's kind of Brad Meldow inspired. I was getting into a lot of his the way he uses the left hand and uh, stuff. So I was I was thinking there, and this is more a question for me. Yeah. To keep learning from my teacher. I know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, who are the who are some of the influences, like people that you're listening to at the yeah. moment? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, historically, my, my, well, the guy we were just talking about recently, just now before we started, Keith Jarrett is probably my biggest influence. Um, he's kind of one of the first jazz pianists I really started listening to because my classical teacher, actually, he, uh, liked, he him. liked him and he, wow. he gave me some of his, uh, he gave me the Cone concert uh -huh. and some of that stuff and then I, I got into his jazz playing through there. Um, uh, so, like, you know, uh, the biggest influences on my playing, like, of, of the older generation would be, like, uh, Keith, uh, Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, Ahmad Jamal is a very big, uh, just the way he uses the piano and, and the sound that he gets and uh, and the, his arrangements, the way he thinks arranging wise. I'm a, a huge Ahmad Jamal fan. Um, McCoy Tyner, of course. You know, I mean, all the great Thelonious Monk, I'm really into Monk's uh, music, uh, his compositions, and, and his playing also. Um, uh, yeah, so those are kind of like, I would say those are my biggest. And now from, from more recent people, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely Brad Meldow, Gonzalo Rubacaba, two of my favorite uh, uh, pianists. And um, there's a lot of great pianists out there now, man. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really a lot of really, really uh, good pianists. So, um, But I, I kind of find myself, you know, as you get older, you start, you kind of go back to the stuff you always liked. It's, it's kind of weird. So I check out music all the time, but I, a lot of times I end up throwing on the same, you know, records that I always loved. It's, it's a weird Thing, is is there like one album that you're like, this is the one album that I always go back to? Well, it used to be uh, Still Live by Keith Jarrett, the, ah, the, two, yeah. the two disc thing. But then I, I, I you know, at, at a certain point I stopped listening to his trio albums because I was copying his way of playing standards so much. Yeah. I was like, I can't do this anymore, you know, so. Um, but, um, and you know, like, uh, some of the old, like like Miles Davis, uh, um, uh, Friday Saturday Night Live at the Blackhawk. I mean, I, that's almost the first album I want to listen to. Anytime I want to listen to jazz, I immediately think of that album. Really? Yeah. So there's a, there's a few. There is something that I learned from Martin when I was uh, at school, because nowadays uh, my generation, which is is kind of my generation, is kind of weird because it's in between the CDs and the streaming. Yeah, you're in the so, middle. Yeah, so so I'm, I have a lot of CDs. I was telling the other day, I have a closet full of CDs. Yeah, yeah, me too. So <laughs> if I, <coughs> sorry, if I sell these CDs, I could buy a house. <laughs> well, no, you couldn't because they're worth about two cents now. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the problem. True. Yeah. That's true. So, but I, I, I have this problem of, uh, we have this problem of having Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube yeah. that nowadays you, you're able to listen to 10,000 records in one day yeah. and listen like 10 seconds of every tune a day. Yeah. And I remember when I was, uh, when I began l getting lessons uh, with you, at the time I was, I had a hard drive with, I don't know, like two terabytes full of MP3s, you know, oh, like it yeah. was full of music and I was listening to all kinds of music. Yeah. And I remember Martin told me, no, no, no. You should get one album and listen to that one album yeah. till, you, till you know every single note that is yeah. happening there. Yeah. And I remember I, went, I, I got like two albums and I, I would listen to that and then go to the next album and then to the next one. Yeah, yeah. And I also, at the time, I was also reading the John Coltrane, the biography, the mm -hmm. Love Supreme. Oh yeah, yeah, that's an amazing book. I read that book. Yeah, yeah. and I there's there's one part that John is talking about the idea of listening to a track and first listening to the whole 
the whole track and then listen to the piano so yep. only the piano and then yeah the bass only. and the bass and the right symbol the, the drums. right symbol yeah yeah that's good so so when you when you think this way you listen to one track like seven times and you know everything that's going on in that I track. you know everything yeah. that's going on there's really no uh there's no uh substitute for that i remember in college um I thought it was amazing because we could check out two CDs from the library every two weeks. <laughs> yeah, and they had got a grant so uh, to buy jazz albums specifically. So they had a good, they had like about almost 2,000 jazz records, which is a lot, <clears throat> especially back then. <clears throat> that was in 19, bro, bro, bro. Yeah, that was in 19. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> years ago. Mario, what happened with the There were CDs. <laughs> they weren't cassette tapes, so it wasn't that, you know. And, uh, and, man, so like I'd have those two albums for two weeks, and I would just like... Burn, 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 yeah. burn everything, <laughs> learn, you know, and it really, I mean, it, 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 it does something. This 10 second culture, and you know, I, I honestly, I'm guilty of that too. Sometimes too. you go there and you're like, oh, that's cool, you know, I don't and like these next, <laughs> yeah, it's like no attention span anymore, and it's, 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 it's rough. So, I, I think part of that le keeps me away from uh, you know, checking stuff out a little bit because I don't, I don't want to get into that trap, but. So now a lot of times I kind of wait for people to recommend me. Like you might say, oh, man, have you checked out, you know. Yeah, have, you have you checked my music? You, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> have you checked my music? <laughs> of course I've checked your music out. Are you crazy? I have all that. I remember I sent you a picture, right? I had it on the, C on the CD player in my did, old car. Did, I, had this, I had the CD. You did CD. To the CD. <laughs> and I listened to every track many, many times. Yeah. So. Oh, man, oh, man. We have Gabriel from, from Francia. Saludos, Gabriel. Oh, welcome. So we have people from all over. Nice. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so I remember going back to always to, to what's the name of that uh, Bill Evans album? Uh, Alone. Alone. Yeah. Yeah, that's an album that I. That that's one of those. Wore out. Wore out. Yeah. That I I keep going back to that. Yeah. Album. Sure. And now I just found out that before the pandemic they release a, a book. With all the all the piano transcriptions, really from that album? Oh um, my god! Because I, w I was uh, like back in 2019. Uh, yeah. A, uh, I, I was transcribing some of his piano stuff, and then I'm I'm on Amazon one day. I'm like, no way! No, that's they, they transcribe. <laughs> Somebody did this. No, I'm buying this. Yeah, of course. So I got the uh, the book. And it's unbelievable because you have every single note that. Oh he was my god, that's incredible. So it's a good. Uh, I mean. I, I learned a lot from just reading the book. Of course, yeah. Because no matter how many times you hear it, you're going to miss a couple of things. So to see it actually there is, is amazing. Man. Well, I don't want to put it in my Santa list now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Below, I, I also got the Oscar Peterson uh, transcription, the one that... Uh, there is also a book that, that they transcribe the... What is it? The Sea Blues? Oh, CGM Blues, the yeah. CGM Blues. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. man, that's awesome. So every single detail is there. So wow. So I also got that, you know, to get it. Is it the whole record, uh, Night Train, or is it just that that tune? No, it's a, the, I mean, the book is, yeah. I think it's a whole, the whole album. The whole album, yeah. that's, a, that's amazing. Yeah. So it's a, it's a really good yeah. book. And another person that I have been listening to lately, and basically the piano solo stuff is the Graham. Oh, man. He got some... Yeah. some not albums, but some videos on YouTube just playing piano solo. Yeah, and uh, it's like it's like like Martin's uh, approach, you know, the, with the odd meters and everything. I think it's amazing. He, he's, man, he, he's an incredible pianist, yeah. <laughs> man, yeah. and <laughs> and super different and kind of create like very creative. And I remember uh, at school I had to learn one of his pieces because uh, there was a recital. And it, they were having trouble finding someone that could that could play the piano part. Really? Yeah. And I had just started teaching there, so I didn't even know you weren't even supposed to play in recitals, really. <laughs> yeah. so you're it's not, like you're, you're not supposed. You're to. not supposed to as a as a professor, <laughs> yeah, uh, on student recitals. So I, I mean, I felt bad for the you know his recitals coming up, and he had done. So, he was a drummer, and he transcribed the oh. piano part to uh, which. Oh man, what's the name really? of the song? The, the, it's called oh the, um, the the jester or something like that. Uh, forgot the name of it he transcribed not only he could transcribe it but he could play it on piano like no pretty okay like you know a little yeah, slower yeah. but like he could kind of get through it so wow. i was like oh man I like gotta do i gotta do this <laughs> and and to learn that piece in a week I, I it almost killed me I mean, it was so difficult it was so hard but it was brilliant like the writing was just amazing he's an unbelievable i mean as a composer he's amazing yeah. and as a piano player he's he's a beast yeah. he's a beast so i play in armenia 
I, oh wow! In, in 20, because he's from Armenia. He's from Armenia, yeah. So I played there in 2019, and I remember asking a few of a few of the guys like, "Hey, do you guys know T Grab?" And everybody was like, "We love T Grab." Of course, yeah. So he's like the guy. He's like, like the hero like, over there, yeah. He's like the yeah. hero there. Yeah. And I, there was even one lady that she came and she said, when he plays here, he plays the best here. I'm like, okay, I, I want to listen yeah. to him <laughs> playing here. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, Martin, what do you want to play? I want to hear more of you. Uh, let's play, uh, let's talk about Monk. I'll play a Monk tune. There you go. Yeah, this is called, um, uh, uh, oh, what's this called? Reflections. That's Reflections. what it's called. <laughs> Reflections. <laughs> 11 a.m. is early to play, too. I'm telling you. <laughs> Forget about it. 8.30 is early, but so is 11. All right. This is Reflections.
That's a really cool arrangement. Thank you. That's that's another tune I I played with uh, Roy a lot. So reflections. Reflections. Yeah, yeah. We played that a bunch, and he played. He he loved Monk's music, so we played a lot of uh, Monk music. He did he get to play? Uh, he got yeah. To play with Monk. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice man. He played with everybody. <laughs> he played with everybody. And he played with Louis Armstrong. No way. Which is crazy. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Wow. Man. Yeah. We're talking about real jazz legend. I mean, right yeah. There. I mean, it doesn't get more real than that, you know. <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine the, the talk of you and, and Roy. You're not talking about all of... Oh, all man, this. yeah. He's an interesting guy because he doesn't talk a lot, so you have to kind of like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Un poquito, like, <laughs> poke him and then, but he, yeah, he has great things to say. And he's yeah. an amazing cat. So, uh, Martin, uh, t uh, tell me about future plans. Like, do you have any upcoming project or yeah. performance and you have been <coughs> playing a lot with the trio yeah the finally after the you know had just started to kind of get things rolling and then the pandemic of course shut that down so uh um i, I finally got uh, those guys back out which is which is really nice and we're going out uh in a couple of months and doing a little uh, like a week and a half tour in the states uh nice. like north carolina south carolina area um And then um, I'm playing with the great Roxana Ahmed, who's one of my favorite singers. There's someone from Argentina here, so I know that yeah. person knows Roxana because she's like kind of a superstar down she's there. She's an amazing yeah. singer. Amazing singer. Um, and we are uh, playing in New York in January, I think. And she has a couple other things happening. Um, uh, what else? Um, We're playing, like you said. That's in a while, yeah, but a, I'm yeah, looking forward uh, to that. May. Yeah, yeah in May we're playing. Do and Roxanne will be singing a little bit with us too. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And so, we'll so there is a video of us yeah. playing from. There is a little clip. Yes. From the last performance. Yeah, uh, Drume Negrita, right? Drume Negrita. Yeah, yeah. So you can check it out, uh, Martin and Kemuel. Yeah, Drume that was so much fun, man. Yeah, that was really cool. Was we're gonna do it again. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that was the first time that we were playing together. So. Yes, that's true. Yeah. yeah. We got to do a duo. You know, I had started to try to do these duo concerts at UM. I did one with Tal Cohen, you know, the great nice. pianist Tal. And, uh, and, um, and then, of course, the pandemic hit. So, <laughs> But now that's something I want to uh, get happening maybe once a year or once a semester, do a, a duo show. So I'm definitely going to have you, Let's do it. you on yeah. there. Yeah, it'd be sure. amazing. Yeah, um, I, think, I think I saw you have a new album coming up, right? Uh, sorry, clip on. No, well, I'm working on a new album. Yeah, I'm, I'm recorded. Uh, I'm doing this one different. I'm like all my other records, you know, like probably the way you do it, where you go in for two days and you kill yourself, you know, and you're like, ah. <laughs> so this one I'm doing very different. I'm doing it like uh, we record two tunes. You know, we, we were doing a tour in Florida. So they came, uh, you know, we the day before we went to the studio and r recorded a couple tracks and nice. suavecito, you know, like easy. Uh, relax mode. Relax mode, and it was man, it was great. I'm like, this is the way to do it. <laughs> so that's going to be working on that for the for the rest of uh, this year, and I have a couple other uh, recording projects. I'm working on a, a something really different too. Um, it's a, a an album of Prince Prince's music. Really? Yeah, I'm a huge Prince fan. He's my number one. Are you doing Purple you know. Rain? Uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> we're doing them all. And that one's going to be a little different. That one's going to be more of a, like on the. I don't know if the fusion is the right word, but a little bit more on the electric, uh, not not electric, but a little more on the kind of fusion With the keyboard side. Everything? Maybe a little bit of key, mostly piano, but like like electric bass and maybe some like keyboard synth stuff like uh, on like uh, added, you know, and, and things like that. Um, nice. So uh, that's another kind of project that's in, in the works. Man, I really want to listen to that album. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I want to do it, man. I've been wanting, I've had these arrangements for like 10 years and I've just, really? yeah, and I've never done anything with him so nice. i'm looking forward to it yeah uh so one thing that i uh, martin is great about uh, in the area of composition and arranging i remember uh, one time that I, i brought a composition to him i was like yeah it's cool but try this and all of a sudden it was a whole new composition <laughs> but it sounded great <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, i'm not changing anything from this <laughs> this is amazing right there so yeah so oh it's already 12 But I want to say a couple of things before. I, I want to listen one more. Do you, the, do you, by any chance, do you know one more piece that you could play? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That's, uh, that might be it. That might be <laughs> all I got. But before, before uh, ending this program, first of all, thank you so much, Martin, for thank being you. here. I, uh, for me, it's truly really an honor to have you here. 
Well, thank Adam. you, man. Yeah, the honor's mine. And Ken Wilds, you guys know Ken Wilds is a monster pianist. And uh, I didn't teach him much of anything. I just, like I was telling Mario before, I just kind of tried to stay out of his way. He's lying. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> and just kind of help him do uh, do his thing. But I, I learned a lot. Uh, I've actually learned a lot uh, uh, from listening to Ken Wilds and talking to him about music and uh Especially about Cuban music, because he's he's he just is such a monster at that, and that's something that I'm still dipping my toes in, into. You We're know, so. Cuban. Yeah, no, no, no. 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 <laughs> Cubano repentido. <laughs> Cubano con acento. Cubano. <laughs> that's what I mean. Gringo repentido. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other way. Uh, Gringo con acento. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's funny though, man. I know we're out of time, but it's important to, to realize that the accent is a part of your music, and it, I, I kind of fought it for a while, and I'm like, not anymore. No, this is me. This is who I am. You know, yeah, there you go. that's the accent makes it different from other people. You know, so whatever. <laughs> no, but I I think it's great what you're doing, combining the American music with the all the you you roots, yeah. your traditions. Thank you, man. I think it's unbelievable. Thanks. And uh, on my end. I, it sounds even even uh, even better because I I hear the Cuban music presented in some sh in, in another way. Yeah, very different. So I, th I think it's it's unbelievable. Oh, so check out you. the hashtag yeah. American. What is it? Cuban American. Q hashtag Cuban American. Yeah. So please, 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 please follow Martin everywhere. Follow him on Instagram, <laughs> on Facebook, on YouTube. Listen to his music on on Apple Music, Amazon. Buy his records. Support him. Uh, He's doing amazing things. Amazing. Are you are you doing any piano solo albums? I have one. Sure? I recorded during the pandemic, and it's I have it ready, kind of ready to go. But I, now I don't like it anymore, so <laughs> so I'm probably gonna do it. That's a <laughs> that's a problem with the pandemic. Yeah. That, that we were doing so so much music, and now we're yeah. like, ah, now I'm like <laughs> no. But that's my next thing. After this next record, I'm, I'm definitely gonna re release a solo nice, record. Nice. I would love to to hear that. Thank you. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Well, today we had a I mean amazing Martin Berrano. Next week we're gonna have back uh, two musicians that were here before and talking about Agustin Conti on bass. Oh yeah, yeah. And Hilario Bell on drums. Woo. So we're gonna do a trio. And the following week we're gonna have a, a percussionist. It's gonna be a Majito. Oh wow, the, man. the guy yeah. that from Venezuela. He plays yeah, with me. that's awesome. So so it's gonna be cool because he's bringing. Uh, his toys, you know, precaution. Mm. You know how they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got all, his, all their toys and they got so a box of toys. <laughs> <them>. <laughs> so it's gonna be amazing. I'm, I'm really looking forward to to that. Uh, so I see you guys next week uh, with with Agustin Conti and Hilario, and then the following week. So w one more two before sure. we go. I'll do a quick quick one. Uh, this is uh, Ergen. Ah, yeah. one of my Sonny Rollins. There you go.